Hi, my name is Dustin Pitts from the Kansas area United Methodist Foundation, and I'm wanting to share with you some giving strategies given the new changes in our tax laws that have come about here for 2018. I am excited to be a part of the foundation and want to help you as people uh, give generously to change lives for the ministries that you're a part of. I serve currently as the president and CEO of the Kansas Area United Methodist Foundation. My previous ministry was primarily as a local pastor, both in Kansas as well as in Nebraska. And I'm excited to be here. The information I want to share with you is some general information that we want to share with you. And yet, for, for each of you, invite you to contact your accountant for details regarding your own situations. Congress has taken action to make some changes to the tax laws, and for many people across our country, it will probably mean that there will be lower taxes. One of the elements of this will be a change of the different tax brackets that will impact people. Another component is with regards to the standard deduction that is now available. Congress, as you see in the bottom right-hand side of this slide, Congress doubled the standard deduction to $12,000 for a single filer and $24,000 for a married filer. And so individuals who had been in the practice possibly of itemizing with Schedule A will not be doing that in this coming uh, tax filing year because of the higher standard deduction. The standard deduction offers a tax deduction even if you do not give to a church or a charity or have mortgage interest to pay or um, other kinds of pieces, medical and other components that are included in that itemization. And so we're wanting to look at what are some strategies for people giving these different tax changes that have happened so that you might give generously to change lives through your church. I mainly want to speak about three options, three strategies for giving because of the tax changes. The first of which is related to the increase in the standard deduction. I have two things I want to say about that. The second one is about persons who are 70 and a half years old who have to take a required minimum distribution from their IRAs, their individual retirement accounts. It's about how to make a qualified charitable distribution that fulfills this requirement and give it straight to the church, avoiding some tax and making a greater contribution and greater difference in their giving than they could have done otherwise. And then lastly, I want to talk about donor advised funds that can be facilitated through a foundation like the Kansas area United Methodist Foundation. All of these are, are ways that we might give generously to change lives. The first of these is the response to our increase of standard deduction. And for many folk, it, it simply will mean we can enjoy a higher level of standard deduction when we file our taxes and, and yet still have an invitation to give to God through the life of the church. God calls us to give proportionally of our income, to move towards a tithe, the tenth of our income, and to do this really regardless of tax implication. They're, they're not tax components that are in the scriptures, but rather a giving generously and joyfully that God might use those gifts to make a difference. In Malachi chapter 3, we hear, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. If you read the rest of that passage, You'll hear how it is that God will bring blessing, pour out blessing upon you a greater way than you can ever imagine. And so we give joyfully and enjoy the higher standard deduction. Another option with regards to this is to consider, and this is probably appropriate and applicable for families that might be close to the new levels of 
uh, standard deduction. So if they normally had been itemizing and their levels are about $12,000 for an individual or $24,000 for a married filing family, they might consider the option of doubling their giving to their church every other year. So that is, uh, if for a particular year you might uh, double the amount of your annual giving to the church and give it in one tax year, and then in the next year uh, use the standard deduction. It'd be an alternating back and forth between each of the two years. And if you do this as a past pastor, uh, I know it's really important to communicate this intention and expectation with your congregation so that they can respond appropriately. A second option is to use the required minimum distribution from your IRA to make a difference and to give it generously. For people who are 70 and a half years of age and they have an IRA, you have a requirement to take a particular minimum distribution. It's a percentage of your fund to take that and to receive that. So for many people, what they do is they receive it and pay ordinary income on that or uh, pay income tax on it. And then they give a tithe or a charitable contribution to their church, which is an appropriate way. However, there is a way to avoid some of the tax that's connected and to give a larger amount to the church. The way that you do this is instead of receiving and taking as income the required minimum distribution from your individual retirement account, your IRA, instead you direct the administrator of the IRA to make what's called a qualified charitable distribution from the IRA and to give it straight and direct to the church. You can make a lasting difference. You won't receive this. It won't be included in your taxable income. And you can give a greater amount because of the avoiding of tax to the church. It's a profound way of making a difference in our local congregations and to do so generously through this option that many of us might consider doing in the way that we give. As a local pastor, we would have families that would give this way once or twice a year to make a lasting difference, fulfilling their tithe commitment to the congregation through the required minimum distribution uh, of their IRA. I had some families who would spread it out throughout the course of the year, a particular percentage that would be drawn off of their IRA to fulfill their commitment to their church. It's an important way to take advantage of the current tax laws and to give to change lives through a church. For some people, as you give your amount to a local congregation, a qualified charitable distribution from your IRA, some people are able to aggregate different IRAs that you might have. This is not applicable for every kind of retirement plan, the qualified plans that you have with a previous company, like a 401k or a 403b. But if you have individual retirement accounts, you might still speak with your accountant to get clarity about what the specifics are for your particular situation. But often you can even aggregate IRA contributions such that you give out of one what would be needed to fulfill your required minimum distribution of multiple accounts. And you can give it directly. This just simplifies this process and give that qualified charitable distribution straight to your church to fulfill the requirement that you have. Here are some of the steps that you might facilitate and use to follow through in using your required minimum distribution, giving it directly to the church. First of all, is just contact your administrator. Many of them have the appropriate forms and they can name the procedure that is necessary for you to make a rollover qualified gift. You can direct a, a transfer actually for up to $100,000 to be made in, in a year from your IRA to a qualified charity. 
Maybe you do this in the way of your annual gift. Maybe you do this in a way to give to something above and beyond a, a project or some uh, capital campaign that you are, are passionate about. You can use these resources and avoid tax on it and give generously to make a difference. If you do an IRA rollover, a required minimum distribution directly to the church, then you will not pay income tax on the amount that is transferred. But it's also important to note that because you're not claiming it as income, you do not have the ability to receive an income tax deduction for that gift that you make. You can't, if you will, double dip um, in how you facilitate it. And as I said earlier, please contact your church to uh, share with them your intentions, for them to be looking for it, and then to respond to, to know that you have made that gift. The last thing I want to lift up is a strategy that you might give generously to change lives, giving the different kinds of tax changes, is to consider to give a stock or cash to a, a foundation and create a donor-advised fund um, where you give an amount, possibly a larger amount than what you would have um, with the standard deduction, and then you can itemize that gift. There are limits about what can be considered um, when you file your taxes, but maybe consider giving to a donor-advised fund and then telling the foundation, directing how you use those funds for the causes that you care about, for your church, for a particular year, or for a particular project, or for other causes that you care about. We as a Kansas Area United Methodist Foundation have these accounts with families and it makes it possible for them to give generously and to direct those resources to make a lasting difference in the people's lives that they are connected to. I hope this has been helpful for you to think about ways and strategies for you to respond to the changes that have come about and to be open to how God might call you to give above and beyond, to give generously, to make a difference in people's lives. If you'd like to learn more about the foundation, you can check out our website at kaumf.org. You can call us. The phone number here is here on the screen, or you can email me, and I would love to visit with you about how we might participate and partner with you to make a difference, to help, help be generous so that we might do the things that God is calling us to do as individuals and as churches. May you be blessed as you give generously. Thank you.